Hi there. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to identify the Liberty Cat, or as it's more commonly known, the Magic Mushroom, which is Psilocybe semilanceata, and it's commonly found across Europe as well as the United Kingdom and in North America. So a very quick disclaimer before I start the video is that this Magic Mushrooms are technically classed as, uh, as a Class A drug in the United Kingdom at least in which case uh, possession is illegal and it's illegal to consume. Um, so I'm making this video simply for educational purposes and do not rely on any of the advice given if you're planning to take or consume or use these magic mushrooms for any legal purposes. So this is a great website, the Mandrick Mushroom or the Mushroom Diary. So. The notorious magic mushroom contains psilocybin, which means that it uh, has hallucinogenic effects on the user. And these can be incredibly medicinal and can especially be very useful for the treatment of mental health disorders such as depression. Magic mushrooms can change their, the way they look in three different ways. Firstly, the age of the fruiting body or the mushroom. Secondly, the weather. And thirdly, individual idiosyncrasies. And what I mean by this is just simply that some mushrooms are just different than others. So let's have a look at a very perfect specimen of quite a young little mushroom. So as you can see, the key identifying features are, firstly, a perfect little nipple. Not all magic mushrooms will have this nipple. Sometimes they don't but most often they will, and this is a key identifying feature. Second of all, a very wavy stem. It's not straight. See, here's a wavy stem. The next thing I'd like to draw your attention to is the general shape of the mushroom, sort of a conical shape. And fourthly, the color. It's sort of a creamy or quite creamy color. And also look at the size. This is quite a young little mushroom but you can see that it's really not bigger, any bigger than my fingernail of a regular sized man, so it's not particularly big. Now let's go back, and there's one final thing, which if you look here, just here under the cap, just under the cap, you can see a little bit of black, and these are the spores that have fallen out from underneath the cap and created a little black stain on the stem. So we started off this video with this perfect little mushroom, but now look at the difference in colour between two magic mushrooms. So one started off very creamy, and the other one is particularly brown. If mushrooms are particularly moist or wet, they will often change colour and become much more brown. And the other notable thing which you can see very slightly is that when it's wet and damp, striations will start to appear in the cap. So these little striations and ridges in the cap will start to appear. So that's one thing to be very, no to, when you're looking for magic mushrooms, take note of the weather, the humidity, the dampness, and whether it's been raining, because this will often change the way the magic mushrooms look. And it's much harder to find them when they are very dark brown. So just after a particularly heavy rainstorm, it's much harder to find magic mushrooms. Now let's have a look at an, at an example of a slightly more mature magic mushroom. So here we are. And again, look at the size. They are, they are normally quite small, although magic mushrooms can potentially become the size of your thumb or slightly bigger at most. So, as again, as you can see, there's a very distinctive nipple on the magic mushroom. But I'd also like to draw your attention to how the cap draws into the stem. So what do I mean by this? I mean here, it draws into the stem, so it maintains its conical shape. And this is key because other similar species that look similar to the magic mushroom often don't draw back into the stem. And the other thing is look at the colour at the bottom of the cap. As magic mushrooms get slightly older, the bottom of the cap will become slightly, will look slightly frayed and become a much darker colour. So let's have a look again. There you go, you can see that darker colour appearing at the base of the stem. 
and that is very also a very good uh, feature to look for to make certain that what you found is definitely a magic mushroom. Now we're looking at two magic mushrooms and look at the difference in colour. You have one that's particularly creamy and one that is actually particularly brown. So that's why sometimes they can be very hard to identify is because based on the weather and whether that individual mushroom is damp, they can massively change the colour and the way they look simply based on dampness. So that is a big reason to take note of what the weather is like. Now I apologise for the slightly horizontal nature of this video, but I wanted to show you what magic mushrooms look like when they become slightly older or when the weather becomes a lot drier. So if you look at this cap, it will often become quite desecrated and it will start to become quite rough on the surface as you can see. So I'll play you a very quick video for how, what they can look like. Have a look. Des so they become very dry and desecrated on the surface as you can see. And again, so first up, fantastic in my fingers is indeed what a magic mushroom a actually looks like. Magic mushroom. Key things to note here is that ones it's on the left dark brown colour, which means that the cap is oh, moist. Tell this? Well, and it's obvious. Looking the other thing to note is when this happens, there's a bit of overlap, but you can see that it's striations. Specifically, there's no nipple ridges on these start mushrooms. To appear. There's no cap, nipples. as you can see. Whatsoever. So key things we can note again: very distinct. Second nipple. of all, if you're looking at the you shape, the magic mushroom. Very wavy stem. Draws inwards. Wavy stem, as you can see here. I, I, I love the wavy stem because it kind of reminds me of the tree stem. Nature. Whereas these ones, magic mushrooms, don't seem to do so. Almost a uh, meta. So have another look. What's in store for you here. when you try one? So there you go. There's another perfect example of. Whereas little, this one, young, interestingly enough, is a little magic mushroom. Magic mushroom. And what I want you to know is that when magic mushrooms are very young, they have an oversized nipple. So you can see. Yeah, there's a massive oversized nipple on the top of this magic mushroom, this little baby. But if we rewind, these two are not magic mushrooms. These are not magic mushrooms. Okay, let's continue and have a look at some more similar species. So here we again, we have a close up look against a magic mushroom and what could be a magic mushroom so this one is indeed not a magic mushroom and this one is a magic mushroom so what's the difference well have a look at this the cap there's a big difference in color and shape so as you can see here the cap does not draw in it the caps sort of stays down it does not draw back into the stem whereas with a magic mushroom the cap draws back into the stem so the very distinctive nipple is not present in the mushroom on the left. Also, if you look at the, um, if you look at the magic mushroom on the left, the ridges are quite thick, whereas in the ridges on a magic mushroom are always going to be quite subtle. They're going to be more subtle, so you can see the ridges are quite thick, whereas on a magic mushroom when it's damp, ridges will be much more, much thinner and there'll be a lot more of them. And also, last thing, if you look at the magic mushroom, when they get slightly older, the bottom of the cap turns black, turns slightly blackish, and it looks as if it's slightly frayed. And that's a very key defining feature. And you can also see some of the magic mushroom spores, which sort of stain the cap black at the bottom. So it's for all of those reasons that this mushroom on the left is 100% not a magic mushroom. Whereas the one on the right is indeed this one is a magic mushroom. Okay, let's continue. So this mushroom is called the egghead mottle gill and also it can potentially be confused with a magic mushroom. So this is a, if we scroll down, this is a more of a picture of what it would look like. And again, the key defining features are absent. So as you can see in a magic mushroom, there's no obvious nipple. The cap does not draw back in stem and also the stem is generally quite straight and magic mushrooms in general can have much more wavy stems and also looking at the overall shape it's very very uniform on both sides so 
and the color as well is, is very, it's very, very creamy. I think magic mushrooms can have a lot more variation. So it's for those reasons, this is indeed not a magic mushroom. Let's have a look at another similar species, uh, the brown mottled gill. Again, the, it, it, it can appear this magic mushroom has nipple by a slight color variation on the top of the cap here. But it's just a color variation. You really need to see an obvious nipple. And this is again where the cap does not draw in. The cap actually draws outwards from the stem. This is markedly different from the magic mushroom, where obviously the cap draws back into the stem. So that's, and also with this mushroom, again, you can see the, the, the stem is also very straight. And as we know, the stem with magic mushrooms is, in the majority of cases, showing some wavy, some, some sort of uh, wave, wavy form. Find magic mushrooms. Well, magic mushrooms grow all over the UK, and you're most likely to find them in grassland, in gardens, or in pasture land, um, especially normally close to where humans live, because that's where the grass is normally kept short, so it's easier to find them. And magic mushrooms are saprobiotic, which means that they're sort of semi-parasitic with grass and they grow um, mutually, in a mutually beneficial relationship. Well, not mutually beneficial, but they grow in a relationship with grasses. Um, and they also grow where it's moist. So if you look at the picture of this map of the United Kingdom where you can find magic mushrooms, you can see sort of in the uh, east side of the United Kingdom, there's a big gap and you'll find it much harder to find them sort of in the east and the south, southeast, England and this is because it's a lot drier there's a lot more intensive agriculture um, so I think you'll find it particularly difficult there but it'd be much easier to find them on the west coast or in Scotland uh, so if you're going to plan on looking for them the time right time of year would be in my experience anywhere from the towards the they can often come up in August at the very end of August um, Rarely, but most normally the season will go from September to October, and it can actually potentially extend all the way to mid December. Um, but again, you'll find the biggest sort of crop will come probably the end of September, so you've got to pay sort of attention uh, at that time of year. And they will come up every single year if you find where they sort of grow, they will come back year after year after year. So I hope that is helpful and feel free to send me a message.